Over a million people live in an RV and over 11% of Americans have some sort of recreational vehicle. After you've been on the road all day and you settle into an RV park, you mostly want to catch up on your online life and see what's going on. To do this, your Wi-Fi has to be solid. The most common complaint on Yelp is that the Wi-Fi doesn't work. And we're going to go over why this is such a problematic environment for Wi-Fi installations. Typically when installing Wi-Fi, it's usually a pretty easy thing. There's software even where you can feed the blueprints of something into software and it'll tell you where to put each AP. And usually, as long as you do it as it says, it usually works. But in this place, it's constantly changing. So it never works as expected. And if you don't take into a lot of considerations, you're gonna get nothing but trouble calls the whole day. We've set up Wi-Fi in stadiums with tens of thousands of users and they're densely packed. That's nowhere as hard as this is. This one is hard because of all the metal, all the trees, all the surroundings. Everything's always dynamic and changing. And all these uh, have a lot of barriers to a Wi-Fi signal. In today's video, we'll, I'll show you what we do to overcome these obstacles and the problems with them. One of the biggest problems or most difficult situations to overcome in this place is everything's always changing. For instance, we have an AP that people are getting access from over there, and then we have a mobile home over here where they're enjoying access. These things are all made of metal. As soon as any wireless signal hits a metal, it's going to reflect. The only ways it gets through are with uh, windows. If they don't have windows facing an access point, you're basically not going to get online. Every one of these places has an access point within it too, which makes the noise floor very high. A noise floor is basically the amount of other things versus the signal that you're trying to get through. It doesn't matter if it's an access point or uh, like a baby monitor on the same frequency. These are all utilizing the same frequencies. And if you can't get through to hear an access point over other noise, that means that your noise floor is too high to actually overcome a signal. Trees can also help or hurt the signal. As you send RF signals through them, the trees will actually absorb them. Trees are mostly made of water. So that can hurt or it can help you a lot. Let's say you have a lot of access points between trees. You can use these trees to absorb all the signals and rebroadcast on the same frequency behind them, allowing you to uh, redouble the frequencies that you would normally use. So to get the signal into here, we actually beam off of the, this casino here. And then this goes to the distribution nodes within this facility. All these distribution nodes work on 60 gigahertz. Now the client devices can't pick this up because it's such a high frequency. That frequency doesn't go through anything. But once we get the 60 gigahertz nodes distributed to the backhaul, then we'll redistribute them at the Wi-Fi frequencies of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. If we can, I like to run fiber lines through these streets, but that would be too cost prohibitive in this place because we'd have to dig up the streets and it'd be over the budget of what this whole place costs to build out. Now, 60 gigahertz, that'll do a few gigs a second. So in order to feed client access, we utilize all the light poles that we can find in the park. This light pole allows us to put up a uh, access point that we can feed power off of. So even though the backhaul is coming in at a gig, the access points aren't gonna use anywhere near that kind of uh, bandwidth. And it's really not about bandwidth. Bandwidth is, is, isn't that important. You know, everyone's Netflix streams or whatever they're watching is only going to use a few megs. It's all about airtime. Airtime is the amount of uh, spectrum that is available in, that is clear without transmissions or the noise floor or anything else hampering a uh, signal between me and a device. Without uh, a clean airtime, all you do is spend time retransmitting the signal. So to get clean airtime, things we'll do are spread the frequencies out as far as we can so that they don't overlap and can't hear other devices. It's also critically important you have a central controller so you can set up the frequencies that one AP knows what the other one's using so they can coordinate all their frequency use. One thing you always hear about from these vendors is that we can mesh access points, but meshing access points is the last thing you want to do. Every time you mesh, you lose the bandwidth by half and you have to use the same frequency on everything to mesh. That's the last thing you want inside this facility. One of the main considerations is the client access density. 
Inside this park, each RV is like someone's home. He, they have their iPads, they have their phones, they have their computers, everything's connected. That means you're gonna have a pretty dense network. In a facility like this, you're gonna get like a 600 to 800 clients of constant use. The bandwidth's not gonna be that great, but because of all those things are constantly talking, your noise floor and everything uh, broadcasting is gonna have quite a bit of data going through it. Now, the density is what you gotta plan for. Knowing that allows you to overcome certain obstacles, like you can't have 300 devices go to one AP. It won't work. The sweet spot for this is about 30 to 50 clients per AP. After that, you won't get that much throughput. So allowing for 30 to 50 people in an area is what's key. It means that you wanna do things for your APs that block clients that are too far away or getting too many transmissions and know that you're gonna have problems the first few times you put this up. You're also going to have to look at any of the problems here. You can see back here, we have a lot of trees. So that means that this AP going backwards isn't gonna feed the people over there. I'm gonna to have to run another cable or get some kind of access over there to retransmit it. 2.4 gigahertz only has 80 megahertz, which means it has three non-overlapping channels. Because of that, we don't have that much frequency to play with. Three non-overlapping channels is three APs. But with 2.4 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz goes a lot further than it will on five gigahertz. So you're gonna to have to turn it off on a lot of things. Why is anyone using 2.4 gigahertz? Because the devices built into these things are generally some of the older devices you'll find. And they just don't have a five gigahertz radio. If you bought an RV in say 2007 or 2008, I guarantee it's not gonna have a five gigahertz radio, but it's not a device that you can pull out and just swap. So you have to design this network knowing that there's going to be some things that are going to have to access very legacy types of protocols and frequencies. 5 gigahertz is what you want to plan for, but there's a lot of caveats to using 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz will give you a lot of spectrum, but only for certain devices. A lot of the cheaper Androids and the cheaper uh, devices aren't going to have a thing called DFS or dynamic frequency selection. That eliminates a whole lower band. And as you go up to like 5.3 gigahertz, the power level goes way down. So as you're planning around for what frequency to use, you have to take into account what you're going to go through because you will get some penetration. But if you're just reflecting off anything, you're just gonna increase your noise floor. With uh, five, seven gigahertz, you have a lot more power, but you don't have that much, much frequencies. So depending on what your density is, here we can see that the density isn't too great for this AP. You're just trying to access maybe 10 trailers. If you use a 5.7 gigahertz uh, node, it'll probably reach down halfway through there, but a lot of it's gonna be reflected back, which might be fine because there's not that much stuff on the other side that you need to get. But if I choose 5.3, it probably won't reach down there because it doesn't have enough power. Newer Wi-Fi standards are really making this a lot easier though. With the newer radios, we have a lot more packs per second than can go through and a lot stronger CPU. Here we have an 802.11ac radio. The standard was finalized in 2013, but the equipment is now just reaching maturity where people actually have it in their laptops and other devices. Because if people don't have these standards in their laptops, it doesn't do much good to have them on the access point for most technologies. Things that this enables you to do are, it has 40% greater throughput if you have a strong signal. Uh, this uses 256 QAM, which is a lot higher of a modulation rate than the old standard of 802.11n at 64 QAM. And it uses MU MIMO, meaning that this can send out multiple streams to multiple users, and they can actually download multiple streams at the same time, doubling the or even quadrupling the bandwidth depending on the simultaneous streams that can go through it through different antennas. Here we have this radio. This radio is actually a Wi-Fi 6. That standard was released in August of 2019, but the equipment's just finally hitting the market. This radio will actually do 25% faster than the last one, which was 256 QAM. This does 1024 QAM, but you gotta have a pretty perfect signal in order to achieve those speeds. And th this uh, technology also has a bunch of other things that you've uh, probably never heard of. So this will actually fragment your packets dynamically, which actually could help you a lot depending on the situation especially if you have uh, part of your streams getting chewed up by other things. In the next year, hopefully we should be gaining another gigahertz of frequency. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E has another gigahertz of spectrum already allocated to it. This uses existing licensed microwave 6 gigahertz. 
Now that will make our job a lot easier in designing these complex networks as uh, you won't have to coordinate every channel as carefully as you do for different types of throughput and areas. Now it's not available yet but the equipment's starting to finally show up in manufacturing betas. Hopefully by the end of next year this should be pretty prevalent. However, like the other equipment, if the client doesn't support it, you're not going to be able to talk to it. Otherwise, they won't know anything about the frequency and it'll just be dead air to everything else. Like designing all networks, what's really important is the end user. You got to look at what the end user is doing and their density. When dealing with density, you might not have to get that much throughput to one user, but you might have to cover an area uh, with the same signal level with a lot of different obstacles. That's really what makes these trailer parks so difficult. So when you're designing a network, any network really, keep in mind what your end goal is. 